Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TCG World 2017. If you're enjoying this last stages of the series, please leave a like on the video if you can. It really helps out the channel and today we are featuring one of the new GXs, a deck based around one of the new GXs, which hasn't been receiving as much hype, but I still feel like it's worth exploring, which is Necrozma GX. Now Necrozma is a very unique Pokemon, starting by its design, it's all like um, chromatic and um, how do you say it? Forgot the word. Uh, it's like symmetric and it's weird, right? It's a weird Pokemon. And then 180 HP Psychic type. Being weak to Psychic is really bad because you're weak to Garbodor and Garbodor I feel like will always be around. However, Metagross, um, like you can kind of switch into a Metagross mode deck, which does have a decent matchup against Carpenter, and you still have the max potions, and you can still cycle through your Metagrosses, so if you're up against Garp, you can completely switch strategies, I think. Now, Light Send, the ability preventing damage by attacks from colorless Pokemon, seems pretty good, um, but on paper, like an actual playing time, uh, the only Pokemon you're really getting protection from is Mega Ray, and Mega Ray is not a popular choice, I would say, amongst the top players, so I don't know if how useful the ability will be. Um, certainly they could have come up with a with a better one for this Pokemon, but I guess uh, Necrozma being like a dark, uh, absorbing light, I don't know, um, it makes sense, it makes sense with its design. Um, the main the main purpose of using Necrozma here is using Prismatic Bursts, which deals only 10 damage, but you get to discard all Psychic Energy attached to Necrozma, and for every Psychic Energy you discard this way, you deal an extra 60 damage. So the math works out really nicely, because if you discard 3 Psychic Energies, you're dealing 190 damage, and 190 damage is the most that any Pokemon, that any basic Pokemon GX or EX has at the moment, and with a choice band, you go all the way up to 220. So you knock out things like Mega Ray, you knock out things like um, Nine Tails GX. There's a ton of Pokemon you are able to knock out with the choice band. And if you're up against other kinds of decks, such as Gardevoir GX, which has that extra 10 HP, well, you're a medical deck, so you won't have an issue with that. And then the Black Ray GX attack is also really good to soften things up and have Metagross just clean up in the back. So it's a very useful GX attack to have, especially because Metagross's GX attack is really good on paper. You get to search for any five cards you want. However, that your turn ends and that means you're very susceptible to an end. And yeah, so that's Necros now. We are pairing it up, as I mentioned, with Metagross GX, which with its Geotech system ability, allows you to keep powering up your Necrozma in order to keep dealing a ton of damage, and uh, it's at 150 HP beast. So yeah, Giga Hammer is also a pretty decent attack, 150 damage for the energy is very cost effective, does have the drawback that you cannot use it the next turn, but you can just retreat, power up another Metagross, you can play Guzma uh, to bypass that, so there's a lot of ways you can do this. Now, I am playing one Guzma and one Lysander, but I don't have any switching cards. So, with Metagross's ability, you don't really have to struggle, you'll probably always have a Tapu Lele in the back, which you can easily retreat, or even the Alolan Vulpix, and maybe even a Beldum. So, the drawback from Guzma is not, um, it's not even a drawback, the side effect of Guzma um, will not hurt you in many instances, but I still do have the one month split, just in case. And after that, we have three Seagomer instead of four, and we do have teammates in this deck. I feel like teammates in stage two decks are always really, really good and really useful. We have Lien, we have the one Cosmo and one Lysander, we have the Bridget, of course, and we have the Hex Mania. We have triple Choice Band, four via Seeker, full trouble, a single Rescue Stretcher. I would love to have two potentially, um, but they really don't fit. Uh, we have four Rare Candy, of course, two Max Potion, and two Field Lore. As I'm noting, noticing this, there's only two cards here that are not either secret, rare, or full art or something. Like the BS Secrets are the only item cards that do not have a full art version, and the Hex Maniac is the only supporter that doesn't have a full art version. That's pretty impressive. So, full art, full, full art decks, I'm sure, are 
will be in the near future. Like most of the useful item cards are already available that way. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's move on to the ladder. Hope we are able to avoid yesterday's deck, Volcanion, and let's use Necrozma Metagos to see how we can deal with this. Now the energy split, which I didn't go into, we have eight basic psychic energy and five basic metal energy. Um, it's really hard to balance the energy in this deck because you want a ton of Psychic when you're going Necrozma, you want extra metal when you're going Metagross. Um, Metagross's two metal energy cost is actually pretty impactful, I would say. Uh, but yeah, we get a pretty okay starting hand. Um, we can go Necrozma. I mean, having metal energy for Necrozma is also not that bad because you can knock out things that have 120 HP or something like that with the, um, with the attack. However, um, the ideal scenario, of course, is to be able to to be able to discard all psychics to deal maximum damage, um, especially against Pokemon such as Lycanroc. And Rock. Um, yeah, I mean, do I even go for a low on Volpix at this point in time? I don't think I do, simply because. I have the crow's mind the active spot. And okay, let's check our prizes. There's wow, we have three energy prizes, really? There's one metal and two psychic energy prizes. We keep and this kept happening with Volcano. We were prizing three energy at a time. So one psychic, no two psychic, one metal energy prized, one necrozma as well. One necrozma. And two rare candy, are you serious? Wow, that's awful. Prizing two rare candy already is pretty bad. Um, I'm gonna touch the metal, though I'm not a huge fan of that, and I'm gonna pass. Wow, two rare candy prize, that's not good. Two rare candy and three energy, that's very... The odds of that happening are very, very low, and okay. So we're not actually against a Lycan Rock GX from Guardians Rising deck. We are probably up against. Um, we are most likely up against that deck, which features the energy removal Lycan Rock. I'm okay with that because we are able to recover a ton of energy, so we really shouldn't struggle against this deck. I mean, the DD that does kind of mean that, well, on a flip, it deals 50 damage. That's actually not bad. Our Necrozma is in a little bit of trouble and it does flip heads. So, double heads for my opponent now. Wait, 30? Oh, yeah, 60. Okay, so I definitely. Cannot um, discard two metagross here, I don't think, with Sycamore. So I'm gonna Lele for an N and hope we can start building our our metangs and metagrosses that way. So yeah, because of our prices, we'll probably end up struggling a little bit to build up our metagrosses. Especially with ends like these ones. Um, yep. I mean, our energy probably gets removed, but there's it's really no big deal. It's really no big deal. There's a strong. And there's either the Lycanroc GX with the ability or the Lycanroc GX which removes energy. Or he could be playing both. Okay, so my point uh, first evolved into the... that's a midnight form, right? And he can knock me out with Claw Flash. So we're in a bit of trouble here. We're definitely in a bit of trouble. He also already has artillery. And we do have teammates. So teammates, we can use either teammates, get one metagross going, and then use a GX attack as well. So probably find rare candy and metang, use the ability, and then with the ability try to set up ourselves for the comeback here. But yeah, it looks like Necrozma will not be playing a part in our comeback. <laughs> so 
And there's a close slash for the knockout now. Oh boy. With dangerous rogue GX, my opponent actually will be able to knock out my my Metagross GX. Unless I remove the choice bands, which is good. Yeah, I think I have to, I definitely have to go for this for this play, so I'm gonna teammate for the rare candy and the meta tank. And then off of the GX attack, I will have to find a max potion, I will have to find extra energy and another meta growth. Okay, so I'll attach the metal, I guess. We can use Brooklet Kill to look through our deck. We can get a low on Vulpix, but that would ensure that my opponent knocks us out. So I'm not gonna do that. And yeah, 3 energy guys, that's just terrible. We're gonna use Algorithm GX, so I totally want two Meta Growths and a Rare Candy. My opponent with a happy face means he has the Max Potion. Mm. I had Kukui, but I don't, I'm not running Kukui. Mm. Yeah, so those and then energy. Those are the right cards to get. We'll probably get that here, but. And my point is having the best start ever. If he hadn't flipped heads. On the attack from uh, from Rock Rough, we would have been okay, and the Crossma would have actually survived. There's a Brooklet Kill, and we're gonna see the end right here. There's no way we don't see an end. DCE. I'd be really surprised as well if he has all this energy denial and he's not running a split of the Lycan Rocks. I'd be really, really surprised. Maybe he's trying to play down his hand to use Octillery. Okay. Yeah, so he's gonna go after the mid which makes sense. It does make sense. And there's the end. So yeah, perfect hand by my opponents. Absolute perfect hand. Um... He can potentially build up the second metagross, which I do think is probably the way to go. He's not going to use the GX attack. That just means I definitely don't uh, bench anything else. And there's a claw flash. Okay. I think I prefer this than him attacking into my metagross, just in case I waste the max potion. However, with the VS Seeker into teammates, I guess I wasn't going to win. So we don't get to knock out the Lycan Rock, but that is perfectly fine. I will be able to find a rare candy. And I kind of want to get the max potion. I kind of really want to get the max potion to prepare for the next turn, because otherwise I won't have a way to search for it. And that means I can use um, N to deny my opponent some resources. So what I'll do is I will discard these two cards and find the metagross that way. And this is where we might, just might be able to get back into the game. But we see two midnight forms, so not too much room for my opponent to have the... Um, oh, please tell me I have a metal. Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is fine, I think. We're gonna Giga Hammer, he's gonna attack us for a ton of damage. Not gonna use the GX attack though, so we have to be very aware of that. He could have potentially benched the other belt though. But yeah, very complicated game because of our slow start. And that is one of the issues with Meta Group, right? The starts. If you get pressured early enough and you're not able to stabilize, you can definitely struggle. We essentially wasted our GX attack completely. And yeah, the energy also gets kind of weird in this deck. You see a rest stretcher for Lele. 
are we going to see a Lysander or a Gizma in order to get a knockout on my Lele? Are you serious? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Nice play by my opponent. Very nice play by my opponent. Must be nice. Must be nice. He's getting everything he would possibly want every turn. Everything he would possibly want every single turn. Wow. Shoot. Everything. He's got everything. Thankfully, not another strong guy. He has the other lightning rod already, so wherever that Metagross goes, it will go down. And it will not, and he will still have the GX attack, that's the biggest thing here. And I already used my GX attack, therefore... Uh, no, definitely discard all the metal. Okay, the Hex means my Metagross might survive. Does mean it might survive here. So that was an okay top deck. It was actually an okay top deck. So I'll play the Hex, and I will take a knockout with Energy Drive, get my two prize cards. He did use the Choice Band, which I'm really surprised. We get a Necrozma and a Red Candy. Both completely useless cards now. I mean, I really couldn't have expected. Well, I could have hit one of my three energy, you know? <laughs> one of my three energy. Getting one of my three energy would have been very useful. Now, if my opponent has a strong, he can use the GX attack to knock out my Lele. And of course he does. <laughs> Of course he does. Yeah, my opponent just having every tool card he needs, or every card he needs, every single turn. The Talon Point was very devastating, didn't allow us to heal with the Max Potion. There's nothing I can do right now. He uses a GX attack, he gets a knockout, and then he has the other Light and Rock. He has the other Light and Rock to get a knockout. Um, okay, maybe we can buy a turn. Although not really. Although not really, and yeah, the day just the, the the early pressure was too much. And the mid game delinquent was too much, and then. He has energy denial, but he's not running the energy denial like a bug, which is really strange. Really, really strange. And I would not be surprised to just see a floatstone, a Tesla, a TC, the last double colorless in order to retreat. Yeah, this really doesn't help us too much in getting any closer to winning the match. There's a Lycan Rock, probably will be using the ability. And my opponent might just be slow playing us. My opponent probably just slow playing us. Yeah, even if he even if he doesn't have a way to retreat. We could be in trouble just because we don't have enough energy to retreat ourselves. Okay, so maybe he does. I mean, I'm sure he has a way to retreat, such as Gusma or Soulstone or the last DC. He just hasn't found it yet. 
need to get it here. Nope, so you see Gummer's away. A ton of energy. That's really good to see. And there's the float stone. So yep. There it is. So let's search for a new match. Try to do a little bit better. And yeah. I mean we couldn't cope with the early pressure. That was the thing. I mean even though my opponent had every right card every single turn, he did not whip a single thing. Um Risk the price he played the delinquent. But yeah, I mean, and it's, it's that, you know, like he was able to set up despite using spaces on things like crushing hammers and delinquent, whereas we struggled to set up and we had terrible price cards, and it happens. It happens. Um, okay, so we get an okay hand. An okay hand. Um, our bench will be a little bit fluttered. I don't mind the triple energy for sure, but we're up against Big Up Blue, so this should be a good matchup just because we're meta growth. So, on paper, the Curlsbound looks really good. Maybe in practice, it's not that good. Obviously, it needs some more testing, but. <laughs> Get the double Lele back. Okay. Get the double Lele back. And my opponent's start is very, very lackluster. Now, will Bridget be available? Yes, it is. Um, so, what's priced here? There's two, no, one take on priced. Um, one take on priced. One Necrozma priced. One Max Potion. No, not the Max Potion I have in my hand. Um, one Ultra Ball, one Choice Band, and one Psychic, and something else that I'm not remembering, but that's okay. And yeah, I mean, getting the Alola and Bullpix here is really, really good. Um, I will find a Necrozma, I guess. I will go for a Necrozma, just because it'd be a really good attacker. And I'm going to beacon for the double metang. If we don't get end here, we'll be in a pretty good spot. Pretty good spot. And we have okay prizes this time around. Yeah, I feel like against my opponent's deck, as long as we focus on meta growth, we really shouldn't struggle too much. And there's the end, as expected. There's the end as expected. But yeah, we get a refresh of our hand, so it's not it's not bad. And we get one meta back. We don't get we get the Lele back. <laughs> That's the third time the second Lele has been in our hand. My opponent keeps with keeps having a very lackluster start. And now uh, do I even bother playing the Lele yet? Or do I just peek on here? I feel like we can afford to beacon. Just go outright for the beacon and we'll grab a med tank and a metagross. I mean, whenever we do melee, we will go for M, of course. But turn 3 metagross and med tank would not be bad at all. Would not be bad at all. Now we're just missing energy to really get going. But we're missing psychic energy, not metal energy. That's the thing. With this deck, the energy balance is very, very delicate. Open discards a Sycamore, potentially indicating that he will be trying to to end us once again. He goes for Bigabolt, so he gets his turn to Bigabolt, and yep, he plays a Lele, definitely going for end here to get rid of my beacon. I do have a really big hand of 8 cards, so going down to 6, but getting the hand refreshed once again. The issue is, I haven't been playing cards. Um, I have beacon twice, but I haven't been playing cards, so my deck is not getting any thinner. But yeah, I mean, I literally couldn't play the field war, nor the max potion. Um, now I hit psychic energy, but now I don't have the supporter. So, 
gonna be beacon time bombs again. Unless my opponents also hit a full stone off of this um off of this end, which would just be crazy. Decides to power up the Bulu, understandable, and hopefully he passes here. Yeah. Okay, so we get to keep our Vulpix, which is very nice. Now I will attach a Psychic right there. And then I kinda want to bench the other Necrozma. Just in case I do lose this one. However, my opponent have a Guzma next turn. We know he's playing Burst Seeker, so it's not that weird version of the deck that doesn't have few Seekers. I could, but yeah, I think this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lie Sander the Gold because that's harder to retreat than the Grubbin. He could just dull power up and I mean use the ability to power up Grubbin and retreat, favor the retreat cost. Um, if we get end. We lose the top of the that I'm gonna go get right now anyway, so... Mm. Yeah, because I still I need a third Psychic Energy to get a knockout. Without a third Psychic Energy, I actually do not get a knockout. So I'm counting on my opponent knocking me out. Yeah, benching the Necrozone makes no sense with this play. Benching the Necrozone actually makes no sense. Best case scenario, he double powers up the Vita Volt and takes a knockout on the Vulpix. <laughs> that would be a huge overextension on my opponent's part. Uh, second best case scenario, he double powers up Vita Volt and retreats and takes a knockout on the Vulpix. I would be okay with that and might be seeing... Okay, there's just one strong charge because he had the energy in hand. It looks like he will be retreating, which I am okay with. He knocks out the Vulpix, that's perfectly fine. The issue is, we either need another Metal Energy, or we need another Psychic Energy. That's the big issue here. My opponent uses another Strong Charge, and yep, he will retreat. So does he have a Lysander? Definitely doesn't have a Cosmo. The last card in his hand, Lysander. Nope, it's not. So... This is perfectly fine. Now we just need to Sycamore into a Psychic Energy. That's all we need to do here. That is literally all we need to basically win this game. Because of my opponent's current core setup. So I'm gonna go there. So going for the Tablele was actually a really good play. We're gonna get a Sycamore. Or we could teammates. If I had teammates, I would need to grab an Ultra Ball and a Psychic, and that would be enough, right? Yeah, that way I can't T. So there's Ultra Balls and there's Psychic Energies, yeah. Yeah, this is better. This way is a lot better. So I'm gonna have teammates for an Ultra Ball and a Psychic Energy. And then we get to do this double discard into the Metagross and then we use double ability and we get to knock out the Tapu Bulu. There's no reason to use the GX attack definitely. Um, yep, yeah, we have to select the two Psychics. So yeah, we finally get the combo going. We have a pretty nice bench. A pretty nice bench. We have two of everything. Um, we don't have a good follow-up to this. We don't even have an extra energy to try and keep the knockouts going, but we will take two prizes, which could be helpful. We can cite a metal and a choice band, so nothing too useful. The energy does mean we can attack once again with the Necrozma. We can even use the GX attack as well. I don't think that's worth it. We should just keep up the tempo and keep attacking. Or I could double uh, meta growth ability and retreat into the meta growth GX in order to use the GX attack. So we'll see. We'll see what the best course of action here is. We see a choice band on the Pika Bolt. He might just outright knock out the Pika Bolt, I mean the Necrozma, which I would be okay because he would activate my teammates once again. So that would mean I would be able to get a knockout as well. Not on the Pika Bolt because of the lightning of, I mean, not with Metagross because of the metal resistance, but yes with uh, Necrozma. So 
I'm okay with that. Let me see triple Bicavolt. Triple Bicavolt. One promo, one reverse holo, and one holo. Pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. There's a Bulu. So Bulu also takes a knockout. But we can take a knockout with Tapu Bulu, I mean with Metagross on the Tapu Bulu. Therefore, keeping the Necros on the bench safe. And it looks like that's the route my opponent is going with. Um, yeah, that's fine. It even has a switch. But yeah, the price count just works really nicely in our favor. Really, really nicely. Now we don't even need to use teammates. I mean, I will. I definitely will. Well, I could actually just not use teammates. Yeah, actually not using teammates is correct here. Why? Because um, I keep the VS Seeker for my center potentially as well. To just knock out the Lele next turn and win. So I'm gonna field lower his choice band just in case I get um, end. That's one less card I will draw. He has yet to play a field lower, so I want to keep the choice bands in play, or the choice band in my hand, and I will just Giga Hammer for the map up here. So this should allow us to close out the game for sure. And finally we get a Sycamore. So without the use of Sycamore or N, just purely by a low and full picks, we are able to to win this match. Just by doing that. Pretty nice. <laughs> I, I like the Alolan right to coin. Now he did promote Tapu Lele. He will play a Brox. But there's nothing that will save him now because I do have a choice band and a VS Seeker. So we have definitely won the game now. He has to retreat. There's no way he can attack with Tapu Lele. Or, I mean, he can because he doesn't know we have the uh, we have the choice band. Triple ability. Oh boy. Triple ability plus the energy that's 140 plus our three energy that's 200. So wow. Triple ability plus an energy plus a choice band plus a three that would have been a Clean knockout on our meta things actually. Right? 6, 7, 8 energy plus our 3, that's 11 to 20 plus the choice one, yeah. So my opponent actually had a chance to knock us out. My opponent actually had a chance to knock us out, but that would have meant that my top 11 they could have revenge knocked out. So we are good here. Either way, uh, we were good. And yep, yeah, there's the 150 damage. And I'm just gonna retreat into my other mana growth. I doubt I doubt it for a second. I was like, is this the right play? Yeah. Because I'm using life. Oh 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 oh. I'm missing an energy. Paolo, you are being ridiculous. You are missing an energy. I am missing an energy. So, actually, no, it's not good game yet. It is not good game yet. Whoopsies. <laughs> Whoopsies, guys. I still needed an energy. Now, I did get the energy now. However, is that even useful? Um, I'm gonna... I don't like that ultra anymore. Um, yeah, our deck is filled with energy. We still have the Seeker and we still have this now, so it should be fine here. Now, the question is, do I attack or do I use my GX attack? I think it's better for me to attack, just in case he does end me. Just in case he does end me. Wait, how many? Five, six, three. Okay, yeah, three. 
Uh, we'll use key attacks. I'll keep the Jigs attack just in case he does Ennis at some point or other. Uh, but yeah, I think the max potion is just too devastating. So I was counting. I was counting on on winning the first turn, but I was one energy short. But yeah, I mean, I think we should still win this match. Even if he gets rid of our field blowers, I can retreat into the Necrozma and I still have the DSC in my hand, or I have the DSC in my hand, so I can Lysander knock out the top lily. We're seeing him powering up the Vika Bolt. Looks like he will attack with the Vika Bolt and he will Lysander. Who is he going to Lysander? Oh, Belden, okay. So once again, we are. Oh no, never mind, because he resets Metagross. So we have the Lysander for the win. I was gonna say, now once again, we're missing an energy, but we're actually not, because the Metagross is already powered up. And because of the Lysander, the effect got reset. So now we win. Now we do win. Thanks to that Lele being on the bench. And yep, there we go. Cool. Okay, so yeah, this is a really good matchup for Metagross for sure. Um, but Bulu has been getting a few hype. Definitely has been getting a little bit of hype. Um, looks like we're at the end of the daily rewards for today. You can see how much I've been playing. And yeah. This will be all for me today guys, thank you so much for watching, please a like on the video if you can, and this deck kind of plays like Vika Bulu, um, it's very different though, uh, it has different advantages, different disadvantages, the typing of Metagross is really what puts the deck, like, it's the thing that makes you consider this deck, just because of Minefields GX and Cardboard GX, but it might not be enough to justify using it, but yeah, thank you guys so much, I will see you guys tomorrow where tomorrow we are actually featuring Neuburn Carpenter. So tune in tomorrow, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't yet, as we reach, as we're very close to reaching 10,000 subscribers, hopefully we reach it by the end of this month and or before Worlds, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.